This is Holly Uso with the math lesson. Here's a simple order of operations problem to start us off. Simplify minus 3 minus 5 times 4. Now, here we have some subtraction with the minus 3 minus 5, and we have multiplication, the minus 5 times the 4. Which to do first? We should do the multiplication and division before we do addition and subtraction. Thus, I will evaluate this portion first. This gives us minus 3. Minus 5 times 4 is minus 20. Next, we'd like to evaluate minus 3 minus 20. If I owe $3 and I borrow another $20, how much will I owe then? I will owe 23 or minus 23. And that is the answer. The next problem we'd like to work is simplify negative 6 plus 7 times the quantity 16 minus 3 squared. What should we do first? Remember that working from the inner parentheses out, we simplify our exponents first. So first we will work the 3 squared. So this equals to minus 6 plus 7 times 16. 3 squared is 9. Next, we will simplify working from the inner parentheses out. So we will do our 16 minus 9. This gives us minus 6 plus 7. 16 minus 9 is 7. Now we have minus 6 plus 7 times 7. We will do the multiplication first. This gives us minus 6 plus 49, since 7 times 7 is 49. Minus 6 plus 49. Well, if I owe $6 and I have $49, once I've paid off my debt, what will I have left? <clears throat> Minus 6 plus 49 is 43. And that is the answer. Simplify 9 minus 4 squared divided by 8 times negative 1. We're first going to simplify the exponents. So, the 4 is raised to the second power. 4 squared is 16, so we get 9. This equals 9 minus 16 divided by 8 times minus 1. Next, we will do multiplication and division together from left to right. Here we have division, negative 16 divided by 8 and then multiplication, 8 times negative 1. Remember, we don't do multiplication first and then division. We do multiplication and division together from left to right. Thus, we will do our division first, which gives us 9 minus 16 divided by 8 is minus 2 times minus 1, which has not been simplified yet. Now, we have 9 minus 2 times negative 1. We will not do the subtraction first because the order of operations suggests that we do multiplication first. It is only by following the order of operations that we can ensure getting the same correct answer each time. 9, <clears throat> this equals to 9, minus 2 times minus 1 is plus 2, and 9 plus 2 we know is 11. And that is the answer. The next problem we'd like to work is simplify negative 6 plus 7 times the quantity 16 minus 3 squared. What should we do first? Remember that working from the inner parentheses out, we simplify our exponents first. So first we will work the 3 squared. So this equals to minus 6 plus 7 times 16. 3 squared is 9. Next, we will simplify working from the inner parentheses out. So we will do our 16 minus 9. This gives us minus 6 plus 7. 16 minus 9 is 7. Now we have minus 6 plus 7 times 7. We will do the multiplication first. This gives us minus 6 plus 49. 
since 7 times 7 is 49. Minus 6 plus 49. Well, if I owe $6 and I have $49, once I've paid off my debt, what will I have left? <clears throat> Minus 6 plus 49 is 43. And that is the answer. Let's look at the difference between two common expressions that we see in mathematics. A minus 3 squared and B, the quantity minus 3 squared, what is the difference? Well, that exponent applies only to the number or variable to its immediate left, unless there are parentheses. Surprisingly, for many students, that does not include the sign. So here we have the opposite of 3 squared, the opposite of 3 squared, and here we have negative 3 all squared. The difference is big. Here we get the opposite of 3 squared, which is the opposite of 3 times 3, or negative 9. And that is the answer for part A. Very different than what happens for part B, which we will work down here. Now we get negative 3 all squared. That's negative 3 times negative 3. We know that a negative times a negative is a positive, and we know that 3 times 3 is 9. Thus, negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. Notice that where those parentheses are makes a world of difference. Pay close attention to those parentheses. It's a good idea to double check the use of parentheses when working an order of operations problem. Watching a professor work math problems may seem a little daunting. If <clears throat> I were to watch Michelle Kwan do her Olympic figure skating, I would no more be able to go out on the ice and figure skate um, the way that she can, um, well, probably ever, but uh, even to do the basics <clears throat> that most 10-year-olds can do in the park. I would not be able to do those things unless I practiced. I would need some good technique, I would need someone who was a pro who I could ask questions of, and I would need practice. It's very similar. You can do math. However, it takes practice, and I'll tell you a little secret. It's fun when you get it. This has been a math lesson with Holly Usopp.